The shaky head is something that we are using all over the country. Pretty much everybody that bass fishes will benefit from the shaky head. Uh, we're gonna make some of these up and then I'm gonna talk to you about a couple of the features that I like about this shaky head and why I think this might be one of my new go-tos. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we are gonna be showing you how to use a new to me mold. This mold's been around for a while. Um, we're gonna be making shaky heads with the Randy Howell Finesse Shaky Head Jig Mold. The actual number is RHF5A, and I'll link everything down in the description like I always do. And then while we're talking about the description, just if you go to the Do It Molds uh, website to buy anything, make sure to use my affiliate link so that way they know that I sent you. It's a link down there, you click on it, you go to the website, they know that I sent you. So if you buy anything, please use that link so that way they know. So this is a multi-cavity mold. You can make five different weights of your shaky heads. You have everything from 1 8 3 16 a quarter, 5 16 and 3 8 The mold calls for a 3 aught to 4 aught or a 5 aught hook, so a lot of different hook options. I'm gonna be using victory hooks in today's video. The specific hook that I'm gonna be using is the victory hook in the 10111 model. It's kind of got an O'Shaughnessy bend and from some of the research that I've been doing before making these shaky heads, the O'Shaughnessy version or that O'Shaughnessy bend and the hook is really good on shaky heads. So that's why I chose this one. And something that's really important that you always wanna do is heat up your mold. Heating up your mold is gonna help you get more complete pours more often, especially in the beginning, because a lot of times that mold's gonna be cold and as that lead goes into the mold when it's cold, it solidifies too fast and you don't get a complete pour out of your jig head. So I have an upcoming tournament at Lake Shasta, and that's why I'm making these shaky heads is those spotted bass up there really like to eat a shaky head. And I chose this hook, this Victory 10111, and the 3-0 because of this O'Shaughnessy bend in it. That O'Shaughnessy bend just has a unique bend in it that's a little bit different than a round bend, and it kind of really is supposed to pin those fish when they get hooked. So the first step, as you can see, is just laying those hooks into the specific slots where you want to make them. This this one right here is the quarter ounce and this one right here is the three eighth ounce. I'm gonna make both sizes so that way I have a couple different options up there. I'm gonna close up that mold. And then I always like to check the top of the mold right here to make sure that it's all flush because if it's not flush, you're gonna end up with some flashing and your jig head might be messed up completely to where it's not even usable. Something I always like to do when I'm making anything with lead is make sure that I have a good flow of lead coming out of my, my pot before we pour. So we just test it. We got good flow, so we're gonna go and bring our mold underneath, pour that in there, go to the next one, pour that in there as well, and then we'll let them set up and we'll check them out. So now we're gonna open up our mold, check out our shaky heads, and they turned out really well. Our hook keepers and everything kind of came in really well. They molded in real well. And I'm talking about this keeper right here on the edge that's gonna keep our plastic nice and pinned. No obvious flashing or anything like that. I think those shaky heads turned out really well. So we're gonna go and make a couple more. Just lay that hook in there. Make sure it gets into its slot nice and completely. Put the 3 8 one in there. Close up our mold. Again, we're gonna check to make sure that we don't have any gaps or anything like that. Everything's nice and flush. Now we're gonna come over to our mold. Pour everything in. And now we're gonna let it set up again. Now it's time to open up the mold. Check out our shaky heads. Those ones turned out good as well. Our keeper didn't quite fill out over on that one, but I think that that's good enough. I'm not too worried about it. And then this one, it turned out turned out really well. That's one of the things that you gotta pay attention to mostly with this mold is just paying attention to those keepers. I think for that one, it's not that big a deal. In worst case scenario, I can always just add a little dab of super glue on there and that, that plastic's gonna work really, really well with that super glue on there. So while making these 3 8 and quarter ounce, I decided to make up some 3 16 so we're gonna go down to the 2 watt size hook. Still gonna use that Victory 10111, but we're gonna use the 2 watt rather than the 3 watt for the 3 16 size. And just like we did with the other ones, we're gonna lay our hook into position. And then, as always, close up the mold, make sure everything's nice and flush. We're gonna check for flow, good flow. And pour up our shaky heads, that easy, guys. So we're gonna open up the mold. And this one turned out good, except our keeper didn't fill in all the way. That might be because that cavity in particular was cold because I haven't poured any, any heads in that cavity in particular. So we'll melt everything off our jig head and I'll show you guys how to do that because that's something that happens a lot is we don't get a complete pour and we need to melt that off. And you can still reuse that hook, so I'll show you that process right now. 
Okay, so before we actually melt all this lead down, one thing to make sure of is to do this easiest, you need to have a lot of lead inside of your lead pot. So you wanna fill it up if possible, if you have extra lead laying around and it's down. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pair of pliers like I have right here, and you wanna have it positioned to where most of that hook is up above your plier. So that way when you dip it in here, that hook eye doesn't get in there. And you wanna be more in line with your pliers and you gotta kinda hold it tight sometimes. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dip it in there, and I like to make sure I don't put the hook point in there, and I don't like the eye of the hook to go under the lead either. You just let everything kinda melt off. There was lead around the eye, so we gotta go a little bit lower, and then just kinda shake it all off, and there we have it. Got a brand new hook ready to go. Now after doing that, that hook is gonna be hot, so we're gonna set that one aside and go to some different hooks that are a little bit cooler. And then once again, we're gonna check for flow. Good flow. Pour everything into that mold, let it set up, and we'll check it out. I'm gonna open up the mold, check out our 3 16th ounce, and sure enough, it looks good. It must have been just that cold mold. The hook that we're putting in right now is the one that I literally melted the lead off of. It's already cooled down enough. Close up that mold. Check for that flow. And now we're gonna fill up our cavity. Let everything set up and it's time to check it out. So we're gonna open up the mold. Got a little bit extra in that 1 8 ounce cavity, but our 3 16 definitely looks good. All filled in, that keeper's in place. Everything looks good. All right, so the next step in our process is cutting off this sprue. Every jig needs to be trimmed up a little bit. So we just cut that off and we still have some lead around the eye of the hook where we're gonna tie everything on. So I'm gonna clip that off. And that right there is our final product. And what I like to do now is just take a file and I'm gonna file all those rough edges down. So it's nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna do the same around the eye of the hook just so it Gives it a nice finished look so we don't have anything hanging around. And now we have our finished shaky head. And since we're talking about victory hooks in today's video, I wanna let you guys know about a promotion that is going on with victory hooks. Pretty much everywhere they sell victory hooks. Um, they're 20% off the rest of the month of January. They've been on sale the whole month. You might've seen it if you're into making tackle or anything like that. But if not, and you're just finding out about it, make sure to go over to the Dual Molds website through my affiliate link that is in the description of today's video. So that way they know that I sent you. Get whatever hooks you're looking for. Um, there's a bunch of different options that they have available that'll, mat that'll match up with a lot of different hooks. If you need some treble hooks to replace some bad treble hooks on some of your hard baits, they have treble hooks as well. Victory Hooks, go to the Duo Molds website through my affiliate link and you can save 20% off your jig hooks and your treble hooks. So now that our jigs are all poured up, they're trimmed up, and they are ready to essentially fish at this point if you want them to keep that same lead color. But if you want to paint them, now is the time to paint them and I'm gonna show you how I paint them with a fluid bed. All right, so what we have right here is a heat gun and we're gonna hold this jig right over the top of the heat gun with it on to heat it up and then we're gonna dip this jig into our fluid bed has green pumpkin protect powder paint and what this fluid bed does is it has air pumping into the bottom of the fluid bed and then that air comes through trying to get out and then you get a nice even fluffier powder kind of like when you shake up the protect powder paint for the first time you're able to go in there and swoosh it around in there and get a nice clear nice finished coat of paint on there. This is how you can do it multiple times, one after another without having to shake anything up is with this fluid bed. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go back and forth with the head of our jig, just trying to get that heat onto the lead and we'll go back about a 10 to a 15 count. And then we'll go into the powder paint. Dab it on there, make sure everything's nice and heated. And there we have it. We got a nice looking shaky head. So we're gonna do that one more time, go back and forth. We're gonna get that 10 to a 15 count. Go into the powder paint, dab off that extra, come back over the heat to melt it down again. 
And there we go. Once again, we got a nice looking shaky head. So one thing you got to make sure of when you're doing these shaky heads is that when you go to bake them in the toaster oven, that the eye of the hook is nice and clean and clear. And there's an easy way to do that. Now these shaky heads have recessed eyes. So an eye buster tool is not going to be ideal. So I just like to take a hook point and I'm going to put that hook point inside of the eye of that hook and just wiggle it around, break up that powder paint inside of there and just make sure that the eye of that hook is nice and clear, just like that. And now that thing is ready to bake. So now that our shaky heads are painted, we've cleaned out those eyes, they are ready to go into the toaster oven to bake. The reason we wanna bake them is because it makes that paint much more durable. I like to bake them twice at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. I feel like that second bake allows them to get a little bit more durable than they are just with one bake. With one bake, if you're in a hurry, no problems at all. But if you don't bake these, the paint's not very durable and it's gonna chip off. Now, when it comes to baking these, there's a couple different ways you can do it. But since we have a bunch to bake, I just like to lay them in here upside down like that. This is not a problem to do as long as you don't put too much paint on there. If you put too much paint, sometimes you can get like a little dimple that hangs off the bottom of your head. But I've been doing it for a while, so that shouldn't be the case. Every once in a while, I'll get one that does that when I hang them upside down like this. Another option is to get these baking clamps. And basically what these do is your jig sits upright inside this clamp. So if you get any paint that drips down, it drips down the shank of the hook. So as you can see, we've got a bunch of them in there. So we're gonna close this up and we're gonna turn this to 20 minutes. Make sure everything's set at 350 on the bake setting. So we're just gonna wait. And uh, once that goes off, they're ready to go, unless we're gonna do it over again. Again, don't forget about the product list and affiliate link down in the description of today's video. And don't forget about that 20% off victory hooks going on right now at a lot of different websites. But one I know for sure has it going on is the Do It Molds website. My Do It Molds affiliate link is down in the description. So please use that link if you're gonna go over there, buy any of those treble hooks, buy any of those jig hooks, or buy any molds that you might need. Uh, that affiliate link, once you click on it, they know that I sent you. And if you buy anything, I'll get credit for that sale. All right, so our shaky heads have finished baking. And I wanna show you a couple of the features as to why I like these heads specifically. One is because I can pick this O'Shaughnessy style hook that's gonna help me with my hookup ratios and keep those fish hooked. Another thing is this wire, this metal built-in keeper. No matter how you rig up this shaky head worm, you're gonna be able to have it stay in place very, very nicely and that it's not a screw lock. Some people say that the screw locks have a way of impacting your hookup ratios and acting somewhat like a weed guard. I found some trick about cutting down that screw lock to keep that from happening. But a lot of people like shaky heads without those screw locks. Something else I like about this is that you're gonna be able to Texas rig the worm and you're gonna be able to just thread it on there and have an exposed hook. Sometimes when those fish are finicky, don't have a ton of cover, sometimes having that exposed hook can really help out. Well guys, pretty cool shaky head. You can tell some thought went into building this one. Stands up down there on the bottom. It's got that hook keeper and you're gonna be able to have a couple different hook options. And I think that this one was designed without that screw lock for a specific reason. Whether you're gonna Texas rig or whether you're gonna have an exposed hook, this shaky head jig will do the deal. If you're gonna go over to the Duo Molds website and buy anything, make sure to use my affiliate link that is down in the description, along with the product list of stuff that you're gonna need for making these shaky heads. And also guys, don't forget about those victory hooks being on sale for 20% off on the Do It Molds website. Just go over there using my affiliate link so they know that I sent you. I'll see you guys in the next video.